Hi again, everybody. Welcome to the Hockey Show, the summer edition. Paul Altmaier, Bob Horace Greeley alongside. And Horace, it's a hot July day, but so much seems to have happened since we last convened in April. Let me tell you something. Hockey is a 365-day-a-year sport. It's the only way it, uh, it can happen. Well, tonight what we plan on talking about is what exactly has happened since our last uh, show in April when we came to you from the Boston Garden. That night, the Providence College Friars won the national championship. We hope to speak with Coach Nate Lehman in a little while, depending on his schedule. We know he's busy right now with Bruins Development Camp. Uh, also on the NHL front, the Stanley Cup champions, the Chicago Blackhawks. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the Bruins have made some news and uh, movement since then. Peter Shirelli is out. Don Sweeney is in. Some questionable trades and yeah. then uh, some, some good free agent signings. So uh, we'll wait and talk about Providence later. Let's start with the Blackhawks. So any surprise there? No, not at all. Uh, they were stronger, they were bigger, they are faster. Uh, they were the best team in the NHL. I mean, uh, and the goaltending stood up and uh, they, they guys can put the puck in the net. Evidently, they've got a pretty good... Um, um, a system where they can pick these young kids and bring them in and sign it, and that just hasn't happened with the Bruins, does it? Well, the, the scouting is, is terrible, I guess. They did make, uh, amongst one of their many moves, uh, the, the head of scouting was relieved of his duties. So Don Sweeney came in, and it seems like he uh, didn't w wait too long to make his mark. But uh, back to Chicago, it's almost an organization that doesn't, they don't, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They reload. They don't rebuild. Yeah, there you go. So uh, you part go. of that reloading, though, they'll have to find someone to replace Patrick Sharp. He was dealt to the Dallas Stars. Correct. Stars picked up a defenseman in the process. Does that make Johnny Oduya available? Because the Bruins still have a little bit of cap money to play with. So I'm not so sure that Trader Donnie is done yet with wheeling and dealing. No, I don't think so either. I think Chicago made some, some good moves uh, as well. Uh, those guys are getting up there in age. Uh, what, they must be like 27, 28 now, right? Mm -hmm. They're not young kids like they, like they were. But um, um, yeah, they're reloading. Uh, and the Bruins, they, uh, once again, the scouting system, um, they get rid of some veterans, which they should have, and there should be more that are going. But once again, they're doing it through trades. They're trying to get people in through trades. It's not through their system. And all that costs you is money. And if the cap is a problem, and you bring these people in who've already got contracts, that doesn't help with the, with, the, with the deal. Whereas if you bring a young kid in, you're not paying him that kind of money. Well, let's talk, yeah. about, those, let's talk about those trades. What were your thoughts when you heard that Milan Lucic had been dealt to the Los Angeles Kings? Great, I'd give him a ride if he needed it. <laughs> Okay. Because I've been complaining about him for the last three years. He plays when he wants to play. If he shows up to play every night, he's he, he's a factor. Um, but to just skating around the neutral zone and just waiting for things to happen and, and getting the garbage goals. And I'm not garbage goals. No goals are garbage goal. All goals count the same at one point. But um, move, go around a defenseman and put it upstairs or anything like that. His, his, his feet never moved. He always felt like it looked like he had cement in his skates. Uh, but when he wanted to play, like when, when uh, um, Charlie Jacobs came in and reamed the team, all of a sudden he gets three goals in two nights. You know, um, you, need, you don't need that. You need to be self-motivated. Uh, most of these guys make, uh, make, their, um, uh, make their move and make their statements uh, on the last year of the contract. Gee, what a coincidence. Well, you know, part of that deal was they had to, ke they had to keep some of his salary. Right. Uh, they did pick up a, bar a backup goalie, Martin Jones who they then used to trade to San Jose. Right. San Jose wanted him. Yeah. And they also got a defenseman, Colin Miller, who may or may not be part of the mix right. this year. You know, right. the Bruins still have to do something about defense yeah. before they drop the puck in April, it's or almost, in April, it, in October. It, it's almost like L.A. didn't want to, you know, trade Jones down the road because uh, they'll come back and bite him. So the yeah. Bruins stepped in, took it, and turned it around and went the other way. Um, uh, uh, I th you know, uh, what do they got for backups now? Bruins, they lost their backup goalie too, right? Yep. So they got Subban and the kid from Finland? Uh, there's also Jeremy Smith, I think. He's yeah. down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, well and unproven. Then, uh, Zane McIntyre, too, from North Dakota. Yeah, once again. Uh, so. You know, unproven. He's uh, first, year, first year here. He's in the uh, rookie camp, right? Okay, Dougie Hamilton and his trade. What were your thoughts on that? You know, when I first saw that, I said, why? Um, uh, he, he's young. He's good. He's strong. He plays well. But I suppose you got to give something to get something, you know, Okay. Paul? And... Um, um, and he didn't want to be here. That's what people are saying. You know? 
um, which, well, you know what? He didn't want to be here, but when they asked him to comment on it, he said, you know what? What happened in Boston stayed in Boston, and I'm done with Boston now. I'm, I've turned the page. And, and so there must be something that he just doesn't want to what, talk about. What could have been that bad for a kid his age making good money, not the money he just signed with for, in Calgary, but good money, what was so bad here? And it's a team that, you remember when he came aboard, okay. they were coming off two cup final appearances, yep. one in which they won. Right, right. So how bad could things be? I, I don't know, but let's just recap. Uh, can you name the last three unhappy plays that left here? Hamilton, Sagan, Kessel? Okay. You see a pattern there? Okay, well Joe Thornton left, but was he unhappy? He allegedly cried when he found out he'd been dealt. Yeah, yeah. You know, Ray Bork left. But I think they wanted he, to. Ray Bork left because he wanted to leave. He wanted to leave, and they wanted to find a home from where he could win the Stanley Cup. Right. And the uh, Avalanche right. handled that for him. Well, is that really helping your team, though? Uh, no, because that that trade panned out. I mean, has the Sagan trade helped the Bruins in the long run? <sighs> well, that's, some of those guys are still pending, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we just traded you know? one of them. Yeah. And that's uh, Riley Smith. Riley Smith. Yeah. So. Yeah. Another one who's been dealt. So it's going to be a different team. You know, this team now. But will, it has to be, doesn't it? Well, it absolutely has to be. I mean, now they've got the hometown boy from Dorchester, Jimmy Hayes. Yep. 6'6", six, six, uh, whatever it He's is. He's a big kid. They've got Bolesky yep. out of Anaheim, who has at one point scored 20 goals. Another big kid, and he likes to think of himself as a power forward. Zach Ronaldo, like you said when I texted you the news, they wanted him for energy. Well, they were getting that from Sean Thornton, weren't they? Exactly my point. Uh, you know, they said, well, they, they, they got a tough guy to come in here and protect these people. Um, you know what? First of all, how many fights are in the NHL in a year? All right? Take every team and add them up in a year. You used to get that in one weekend in the Bruins game. <laughs> all right? You don't see that anymore. It's European hockey that we're watching, and it just doesn't happen. Um, so now they go and get this other kid, this Ronaldo, um, uh, tough kid, but you're looking for somebody who's tough, can play the fourth line, and can put the puck on the net. Gee, Thornton comes to my mind. Okay. I, I agree. But you know what? They're getting a, a guy a bit younger than, than uh, Sean Thornton yeah. and Zach Ronaldo. Yeah, but Thornton and could put the puck in the net. He could score some goals. Ronaldo's forte is definitely not offense. Right. It's, it's made right. banging people around. Right. Uh, it, it's going to be interesting. I have to say, as a fan, I was a bit skeptical of some of the trades because you were getting back draft picks and prospects. Um, then... At the draft, they take three kids, and the, the last one, uh, Seneshin, everybody said he would have been available in the second round. Well, maybe 10 years from now, people are going to be saying, that was a great draft pick the Bruins made. Well, you can say that about anybody. Well, sure, but l let's just hope that pans right. out for them. Well, l l first of all, in the draft, I think, that, I think that they were trying to get as many picks, first-round picks as they could because they had, they had them and they were available. So they were making trades for first-round picks. But I think everyone in the building knew that they were waiting to get those picks to say, okay, who wants them? So I can take, I'll give you 12 and 13, 13 and 14, and you give me number three, all right? Because that's what they wanted. They want the kid out of BC, you know. And um, uh, everyone just sat there and looked at them and said, you know what? No, now you're stuck with them. And they knew that what was available in 13, 14, and 15, because everybody has the, the list, what was available in those, in those positions wasn't conducive to what the Bruins needed, mm -hmm. you know? And then you, you're just talking about the, the, the tough guy that Ronaldo comes in. Um, is it, is it really advantageous to have a tough guy sitting on the end of the bench in case you need him twice a year with a salary cap? I agree. Well, they, they still have a tough guy in Adam McQuaid, who is now back in the fold. He can drop For how him. long? Another month? <laughs> well, you're always so skeptical. In the last three years, he's missed 80 games. That's a whole season. Okay. That's a whole season. True. And it was cute the way they did that. They, uh, they, they uh, go to the media and they say... Um, Lucci's gone. Everybody says, oh, Lucci's gone. Lucci's gone. Lucci. Two hours later, oh, we signed Adam McQuaid for uh, 5.7 <laughs> million. Oh, 4. 7, yeah, 4. Well, you, you wait until the point, NFL comes out with the, with the Brady ruling. That'll be at 11.59 on a Friday no, night. Yeah, well, 5.7 5. million. We just signed him. And then, you know, two hours after that, oh, Hamilton's gone. Or, or Hamilton went before Lucci's. Whatever it was, they certainly tried to sneak it in there. And, 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 and But people realize, hockey fans say, wait a minute. 4.75 for him, and they offered Dougie 5.75? You know, that's a lot of money for him. For a commodity that, once again, he's a tough kid, not offensive-minded, which they have to get away from that defense now, that Shirelli defensive plan that 
you know, if they don't score, we don't lose. Well, you know what? You're going to put the puck in the net to win anyway. Well, as we mentioned at the beginning of the show, we were hoping to have the national champion, Providence College Friars coach Nate Lehman, join us, and he is indeed on the phone. Nate, first of all, congratulations on a terrific season and a terrific win. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, it was, uh, it was a special moment. It was a great hockey game. I thought all the games in the tournament that we played were great hockey games. And yeah. We certainly beat a really, really good BU team, so, you know, very proud of it. Yeah, as I mentioned to you uh, in an email earlier, I've been part of the last, I've been to about 20 Frozen Fours, but I've been working them for about 15 years, both Horace and This was special. I mean, my daughter's a student there, but you've got such a great bunch of kids, and it was such a great, just, just a great ride. And at what point during the year, whether it was October or March or even April, did you realize, you know, we could really go all the way? We to be honest with you, we felt that going into the season. Um, right. You know, certainly, I mean, I think you go into every season. But, you know, we went into high expectations for, for our team program. You know, to win the national championship way because there's, you know, there's uh, the team just in college hockey right now that right. bounce here, bounce there our team this year um we struggled to score uh forced us to get really you know better in a lot of areas so we're really happy about that and, and then you know at the end of the day everything worked out for us that was a great uh, uh great uh, uh frozen four and you know they get better and better every year and the competition does get tougher and tougher and uh looking at looking at your past record um with union uh they were a surprise and they came along too and they won it yeah, I mean, um, you know, I think uh, that was a work. There's a lot of years of, of building there. National championship team, and I was fortunate to be part of there. And then after I left, uh, Rick Bennett, you know, yep. um, took the program to another yep. level. The, the underlying factors, you need to have very good players, <laughs> yep. you know. Um, and I think both that union and there's, you know, there's some that, um, you know, help win the championship. Don't cut yourself short here. Uh, you, uh, you were part of that recruiting as well. I was part of a staff. I mean, there are three, you know, in college there's three guys that do the recruiting, and, you know, all three guys are working hard all the time. And mm -hmm. uh, more some guys, you're still guys. But, you know, really it's... Uh, you know, recruiting is the lifeblood. Recruiting is the lifeblood of, of of college hockey. I mean, you're not going to be good if you don't have the players. So, so much time is spent on recruiting, and to do that, you need great assistance. So, if you got great assistance, you get great players that make everyone kind of look good. Yeah. Well, speaking of recruiting, um, every it seems like you got the bullseye on your back this year. Everyone's going to be aiming for you, and you have to keep up with the the consistency of uh, being able to uh, um, accept the challenge and uh, overtake it. Uh, how's it looking uh, for Providence down the road? Well, I like our team coming back. Um, you know, we lose our top two centermen, or right. two of our top, I would say, centermen in Noah Cherry and, and Ross Mountain. Because I thought we really had four centermen last year that, that could all play top two. So, yeah. um, you, you know, and I gotta, so we lose two of them. Step up up front. And then the big one, the big one is in net, you know, losing John Gillies. Right. You know, John's kind of been our rock for the past three years, and you know, having him, uh, you know, move on and throw him. But th that's certainly a question mark for us going into the season. I like the two guys we have, um, but uh, living up to the expectations of John and then, you know, kind of them taking the ball and running with it, um, those are all things that you work through. So we're, I'm excited about it. I think we got some. We also have a, a local kid uh, that Horace is familiar with, the family, Eric Foley, and uh, yeah. he seems to be a, a pretty uh, formidable prospect for you guys going down the road. Yeah, he is. I mean, Eric, he's on campus now uh, for Sunday. summer school. He got drafted, you know, fairly high by Winnipeg this year. He had a terrific year in Cedar Rapids last year. I mean, yes. if you can go in uh, first-year player and a, a true, you know, a, a lead a team in the USHL in scoring, you've had a tremendous season. So 
he had a great season last year and and he's, he's having a good summer and hopefully it carries over to the season because I certainly think he's going to be a guy one guy that can help pick up the slack good for him. and you also have a goalie coming in uh, you know whether or not he can replace John Gillies it's going to be yet to be seen but a great last name, Hayden Hockey, and I think uh, our friend John Butchergrass will have some fun with that. Yeah, I think he already has. <laughs> you no, know, Hayden was the USHL goalie of the year, and then he was returning, uh, you know, for last year, and he, he had someone run him over in the net, and he, he blew his knee out, you know, so that was that was a little bit of a, a hiccup, and but he's been on campus all summer working with their trainer, working with and, you know, we'll see where he's at in August. I think it's a uh, it's a tough injury to come back from. So we're just hoping that uh, you know we can kind of bring him along slowly, build his confidence the right way, um, get him back from this injury, and and you know use him and Nick Ellis, uh, who's a junior for us, to you know to kind of be you know our goal is to be top four in hockey East and goal. So okay, um, you know between the two. You know, one thing I wanted to ask in in. Uh the, the Frozen Four, the last game, you're down a goal to BU. It's a team, if I'm not mistaken, they had not lost a game after leading after two periods all year long. Right. What do you tell you guys, especially when they had who so many thought was the greatest player in, in the college ranks, Jack Eichel on the other side, but what do you say to the boys knowing you got to like, get one to tie and then you're going to need another one at least to win? Well, I mean, um, fortunately for us, um, winning the third period is something that we focus on all year. I think that's part of our goal, um, you know, and and so I, I didn't really tell our guys anything different than going in and telling them all year worked in our benefit. Um, BU had a tremendous record, of course, um, but, you know, when, when we game, uh, sort of a talk that the guys had heard before and I think when you get to that point in the season um, familiarity um, really helps the guy tough to always something new I think. curveballs or adjustments and things like that you, you want to keep it simple you want to keep it easy for them and I think that you know because I, this is this is where we're at uh, we want to win the third period um, this is these are some of the minor things we're going to do to do it. Um, the guys, I think the guys gained a lot of confidence, and, and I think uh, you know we were really able to get our feet going in that third period and put a little more pressure on their D in the neutral zone, and I think that got us on our toes and got us rolling a little bit. Well, one thing that I, I found so impressive in that third period, uh, I was focusing on when Tom Parisi dumped the puck in. And you know you can call what you want. It was an unfortunate goal given up by Matt O'Connor, but I noticed to a man, from yourself to all of your players, nobody really referred to it in a disparaging way. It was you know a lucky, br- and I think that speaks volumes about you know the type of organization, the type of program you run at Providence. Well, I, you know the, the, it's funny. I've been you just spend a lot of you spend some time thinking about it in the summer and reflecting the things, and we should in the first half of the season and even some games in the second half in the playoffs really shows we're getting we wanted and it just wasn't going in for us. actually playing great hockey and, uh, and then we go into the NCAA tournament and we ended up scoring goals a game and leading the tournament scoring but over, a, over the course of a season, those you know, you tell your team that you know, like these bounces are going to even out, guys. We're going to stop hitting posts, and pucks are going to go in for us. You know, eventually these bounces got our way, and and the funny thing, you know, that bounce went our way. Uh, yeah. But mm-hmm. in the season that didn't go our way, yeah. um, we got one at the right time. Coach, uh, let me ask you a question about, uh, um, like I said, you know, the, the bullseye in your back this year in hockey East is is. Uh, become leaps and bounds uh, over some of the other leagues and it's uh, strong strong and very competitive and a lot of the guys are stepping up and going into the NHL who do you think is going to be the uh, toughest top four teams that, uh, excluding yourself of course uh, the top four teams are the teams that uh, really uh, uh, be contenders this year yeah you know it's another thing you, you know you're driving recruiting or you're, you're you know you're you're thinking this summer 
Yeah, I've been I've been brainstorming about that a little bit. I don't know if there's four. I think there's six. Yeah, you know, well, I, yeah. I think yeah. our team and our league and and you can look at the over the past two years has been so tight. Yep. I don't think you can say it's four teams. I think you got to say it's six, seven teams. And you know the, the the line of separation in our league is really really short. Yeah. Uh, and that that's what makes our league great. That's what prepares us for the national tournament. Uh, we beat up on each other last year, right. and all of a sudden in the championship game. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, but, I, you know, certainly I think BC and BU are going to be right up there. I mean, I think it, it starts with those two teams. I, I believe UNH is going to have a terrific team this year. Yeah. they got a young boy by the name of um, Podorowski that's he's really a good player. Um, those three teams are going to be good. I think you, 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 the season, I think they're going to be good. You know, we hope to be in there. I know Vermont's going to be in there. I know Notre Dame's going to be in there. Yeah. I think yeah. UConn's going to be improved. I mean, Merrimack is always terrific. You know, Mark Dennehy is quietly one of the best coaches in the it, Everyone that plays against knows how tough it is to play against them. And so, I mean, you can go right down the list. And then, oh, then you got Northeastern with Kevin Roy there. Yeah. You know, probably maybe the best forward in our league, you know? Yeah. So you can go right down the list and say, well, wait a second, this team could do it, or this team, that team could do it, or this team. And that's what makes our league so great. Um, if you looked at the number of kids drafted in the draft yeah. recently, 26, you know, with hockey East ties, yeah. the next closest league was 10 with the Big Ten. And I think, you know, our league is, it's a great league. It's a battle every night. Um, it's competitive every night. It's great coaching. It's great players. And it's, it really makes it a good product to watch. Speaking of hockey East, Coach, I know that uh, back in the late 90s, and a volunteer assistant coach with UMaine, it's, I think, a safe bet to say Sean Walsh had a profound effect on, on how your career has come about. Is that true? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Sean was, I mean, we won the national championship that year, so you obviously have a really, you know, that imprints you. You know what I mean? That's your imprint yeah. right there for success. Yeah. And fortunately for me, it was my first experience. Um, you know, and and winning it all. Then I was around Sean. I was also around Grant Stanbrook and another coach. Uh, those guys are exceptional coaches, and it was. Uh, I was really fortunate to break into the business that way and uh, be around such great coaches. And Sean did in his time, winning two national championships and taking you know Maine to being a perennial powerhouse. It's pretty terrific, and he's a pretty special uh, coach there. Now, Coach, I know uh, we're going to wrap things up and let you get back to your family. Uh, you had mentioned you were at the Bruins development camp. What can Bruins fans look forward to seeing your former player, Noel Ashari, in the black and gold? Uh, Noel's a heavy player. I mean, he's uh, he's a heavy player. That's you know, I think he's going to be uh, in probably a grittier role. I don't. I think he's you know he's going to be in Providence most likely this year. Uh -huh learning the pro game and, and developing his game and hopefully he continues to get better and he gets the opportunities in Boston but you know from working the development camp I think um, the, I think their future is really bright there's a lot of good forwards there um, you know the first round picks look really good I mean they're young obviously but they look really good so um, you know I think uh, I think Bruins fans are you know have a bright future excellent is part of your future going to include a trip to the White House I don't think so. Oh. Um, you know, like uh, when President Obama took over, he's really not—he's uh, not really been open to uh, sports other than basketball and football visiting. Um, so, a little bit of a downer. Uh, I think Union got denied. I'm they sure did get denied. Yes. Denied. I don't know about Yale, um, but we've been working. And, wow! You no, know, it, it is what it is. You don't control those things, and uh, that's awful. You know, we got a, a pretty special night uh, of our team getting back together, and we're having a lot of. You know, you know yet what date the banner ra raising will be? The banner raising is going to be against Holy Cross, uh, which is. Friday night, I think the second weekend of the season. Okay, excellent. So, yeah. And finally, before yeah. we let you go, every time the Frozen Four comes about, when Bob and I are doing our stat stuff for ESPN, we ask Barry Melrose who he likes, and I vividly remember he said, yeah. I like Providence College. They're built yeah. to win it this year, and boy, was he right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, again, like we struggled scoring for a long time, but we were, we were doing the right things, and we were getting our chances, and we stayed after it. 
Um, and you got to give the guys a lot of credit because at the right time we were playing the right type of hockey, you know, which I kind of, you know, big heavy hockey, and uh, we were able to score goals and we were able to, you know, find a way to beat some really good teams and and do something pretty special. But uh, I'll buy Barry lunch the next time I see him for that. <laughs> Nate, thank you so much for your time. Enjoy the rest of the summer and best of luck in 2015-16. I appreciate it, guys. Thanks for having me. Coach, Thank good you, luck. Thank you, Coach. Bye-bye. Okay, hold on. So, national championship coach, Nate Lehman, sounded like he had one of his three boys with him. Uh, maybe the uh, duties were done at the Bruins Development Camp, but, uh, you know, like you said, they will have a bullseye on them yeah. going forward. Yeah, I mean, I think everyone that uh, uh, that reach, reaches that height does, because uh, even if you're not having a good year, you want to say, yeah, we beat the national champions, you know? And... Uh, he was poolside with the kids, that's for sure. Yeah. But uh, it was nice for him to take time out to uh, give us a little information, a little insight on Providence. And for you hockey fans, Providence is right down the street. National championship. You know, take take time out, bring the kids down. It's a great take. Well, you know what? There is so much great hockey in this area. We say yeah. it time after time after time. You know, BU, BC, Harvard, Northeastern. Uh, yeah. You can even go down to D3, Curry. You've got schools in Boston. Sure. You've got sure. UMass, Dartmouth. Uh, there's just there's there's a plethora that means a lot yeah, of great a, college hockey options <laughs> for you to to partake in and uh, you know and that it's, includes the junior it's hockey it's inexpensive too. as well yeah inexpensive uh, quick note on high school hockey uh, since we last convened guy we actually saw back in uh, Marlboro when we went to the Bruins alumni game uh, as part of the um, Fisher House yeah uh, charity event uh, the coach at Catholic Memorial Billy Hanson. Hanson. Let go. Yeah. As well as the athletic director. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't know what happened. Uh, maybe some folks won a national championship every year. Even uh, down in Rhode Island, you know, you would th hope they don't win them every year at, at, at Mount St. Charles. Not Bill Belial. He can't even do that. Yeah, you would hope that's the reason. But um, uh, he's had some problems here anyway. He got suspended a few times and uh, um, for practices. Was that the deal? Breaking yeah, I think the, 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 the holier-than-thou MIAA. They, yeah. he, they didn't have their blessing for the... Wow. You know, who pays their salaries, too, I'd like to know? Uh, you do when you buy a ticket to walk into playoff games only. Okay, okay. Uh, to go back to what Nate Lehman said, that, that annoys me to no end. That oh. basketball, and it, it's how many guys on a football team do you have to get cleared? And it's not like you just show up to the White House and you come in. There are background checks. There's a lot of work. Yeah, uh, yeah. A football team with coaches and everything must be at least 100 people. Hockey team, maybe 40. And let, me ask you, and let me ask you a question. We read that police blotter all the time. Talk about well, background checks. You know what? Are Spe you kidding me? Speaking of that, well, now that you bring it up. Why wouldn't I? It's the best part of my show. just get right into the police blotter? Uh, we are going to kick this off with the National Football League. This oh. is a beauty. The Buffalo Bills happen to have one of the worst offensive lines last season. That's true. And their new coach, O-line coach, Aaron Cromer, was supposed to help change that. Well, Cromer was arrested in Florida over the weekend for allegedly punching a boy in the face after he used his beach chair and then threatening to kill the boy's family. And this casts a bit of a doubt on his future with the Bills. He has been put on paid administrative leave, Wait a which minute, is no. a gig I'd love to get. I was just going to say, first of all, how do you get on paid <coughs> administrative me. leave? Yeah. And second of all, you think it might affect his job that he's going to yeah. kill a uh, guy and his family? Well, all I have to say is this. You never hear of Bruins assistant coach Joey Sacco threatening to kill people, do you? No, or Aaron no. Broughton. No, nope. Uh, Gilbert, Arizona, former NFL quarterback Donovan McNabb oh. has been arrested in Arizona on suspicion of driving under the influence for the second time in 18 months. McNabb told officers he had just left a sports bar and was driving home. He then rear-ended the wife of a policeman, her car, rather, yep. and he appeared to be impaired. He has not been found guilty in the case, but in March of 2014, he did plead guilty to a DUI violation and spent a day in jail for it. If he's found guilty this time, he'll be in much deeper trouble, and he's also been uh, taken off Fox TV and NBC Radio as well. Uh, so that's Donovan McNabb. Do you recall Peter McNabb in such debauchery? No, nope. no, 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 no. Let me I. ask you a question now. If he wins a national championship, I mean, the. Um, yeah, if he was on a championship team next year, would he be at the White House? <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe. Uh, Miami Beach, Florida. Green Bay Packers tight end Andrew Quarles was arrested last week after police said he fired two shots into the air during an argument outside of Miami oh, Beach parking garage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Police say a witness reported that Corliss was riding in a black Porsche with three other people around 5 in the morning Saturday when they pulled up to a car full of women. The football player and another man approached the car. A conversation escalated and witnesses said they heard women yelling for Corliss and his friend to leave them alone. That's when Corliss pulled out a handgun and let two shots rip into the air. Corliss and the driver of the Porsche fled but were found later and the gun was recovered, the affidavit states. So Corliss, uh, Andrew Corliss charged with discharging a firearm in public. Has Andrew McQuaid been charged with anything like that? Did he, did he own the gun? Was it registered? They didn't say. No, of course they didn't. Certainly hoping so. Yeah. Uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. Police records indicate Hornets guard P.J. Hairston was cited last month for driving with a revoked license and expired tags, speeding, and driving left of the center line. It's the third straight summer that Hairston, who is only 22, has had legal troubles. Uh, two years ago, misdemeanor marijuana possession of driving without a license. Those charges were dismissed when he provided a license and did a drug assessment court course. Last summer, misdemeanor assault at a pickup basketball game in Durham, North Carolina. Those charges were later dismissed. Uh, so PJ Hairston seems to have fun-filled summers. Do we ever hear PJ Stock running afoul of the law? PJ Axelson, either one of nope, them. Nope, nor PJ, who was on the ice at Bruins Development Camp yesterday. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. Uh, Bloomington. Isn't it interesting? It's just a point of interesting. These guys are beating up people and, and, and everything just gets dismissed? Yeah. Yeah. Bloomington, Indiana. Indiana University football player Antonio Allen has been arrested and charged with several felony drug offenses. Charges include dealing, dealing heroin, dealing cocaine, possession of heroin over 10 grams, possession of cocaine, maintaining common nuisance. He is currently being held on $75,000 bail, plus $1,000 surety cash. Now, have we ever heard of Providence College hockey players maintaining a common nuisance? No. No, no not at all. That's why they're national champions. Let me ask you now, he, would you just repeat the charges again? Yes. Follow along. Dealing methamphetamine, dealing heroin, <laughs> dealing cocaine, possession of heroin, possession of cocaine, and maintaining a common nuisance. Okay, so dealing co cocaine, dealing heroin, dealing... With, that, there's three jobs there. What's he <coughs> playing Excuse football, me. too? <laughs> yeah. Boy, yeah. he's a busy guy. Uh, well, we all heard about Brandon Spikes, oh. charged with speeding, negligent driving, and other motor vehicle offenses stemming from an accident earlier this season. Can you believe that deer just jumped right out in front of him? <laughs> That's what he said. Uh, his damaged Mercedes Maybach, which costs $190,000 if you go to buy one, uh, he found that the car was found abandoned on I-495 in Foxborough early one morning, as in 3.30 a.m. Yeah. Uh, the police later determined that he crashed into the back of a sport utility vehicle in which there was a man, woman, and a 12-year-old boy right. who all suffered mild injuries, minor injuries. Uh, so Spikes was charged with that. As you said, he claimed he hit a deer. The Massachusetts State Police aren't going to be fooled with that. There, <laughs> no. were no, there was no deer hair in the grill, no deer bones scattered, no, no, no blood deer anywhere. marks, deer teeth. No. Uh, so Brandon Spikes lying to law enforcement officials. You know, that Frozen Four we just talked about, Brandon Tanev scored the game-winning right. goal for Providence. That's right. He hasn't been cracking up any $200,000 no. cars and leaving them on the side of the road, no. has he? Telling a no, tall sorry. tale. Telling a tall tale as well. Uh, this is from Salt Lake City. But he's City. gone now. Excuse me? Spikes is gone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They wasted no time getting him They got rid of him out. in a heartbeat, yeah. Uh, Salt Lake City, Utah quarterback Dominique Hatfield has been arrested on suspicion of robbing a man who planned to buy an Xbox game console from him. Police state that Hatfield met the man at a car wash when responding to an online classified ad for the Xbox. It's then when Hatfield pulled the knife and made off with $180 cash. He was later arrested when he returned to the car wash after the victim's wife posted as an interesting buyer online to set up a meeting to purchase two phones that had been advertised, according to the police. Uh, those, those ads were listed under the name David Wilkins. So police had been alerted to the earlier robbery. They grabbed Hatfield at the car wash and held him until the victim arrived and ID'd Hatfield as the person who stole his money. Bail was set at $50,000 uh, for Dominic Hatfield. Did Dominic Hasek ever no, rob people at no, knife point? No, not at all. No. Not at all. He now did what, not. What, 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 what's he do? He's <coughs> a, excuse me. He is a cornerback at Utah, Utah University, U now, University one, of Utah. Now once, once again, uh, let's say the average um, the average tuition is 50. We'll, we'll round it up to 50 grand. Yep. He's making 200 grand. Yep. 
for playing football in college, and he's got to go out and rob somebody of an Xbox at knife point. Yep. And finally, we have been accused in the past of being uh, partial to hockey players. Well, we a, a hockey player has made the police blotter. Oh. Uh, oh. Yep. And but it's it's one it's, one hockey player. Yeah. Well, okay. Jared Stahl allegedly had um, oxycontin okay. at the border. All right. Allegedly. Yep. I don't know all the details, no, but this wouldn't. is different. This is Ryan O'Reilly. Okay. Uh, just six days after signing the richest contract in Buffalo Sabres franchise history, center Ryan O'Reilly was arrested last week and charged with driving a motor vehicle while ability impaired and leaving the scene of an accident after his pickup truck reportedly <laughs> rammed into a get, Tim now, Hortons. Get yourself together, you know. <laughs> he, he, he drove it into a Tim Hortons in Ontario. Was it a drive through <laughs> It is now. <laughs> The incident took place uh, early one Thursday morning, about 4.05, and according to Ontario Provincial well, Police... Well, the donuts are fresher then, huh? <laughs> Absolutely. Fred the Baker's yeah, there then. He's there. Or maybe up there it's Rajon the Baker. Yeah. Uh, he's got Rajon. a 51 Chevy pickup, which looked nice prior to this, and it struck the Tim Hortons. O'Reilly allegedly drove the vehicle for a short time before abandoning it and moving on foot with an unnamed male passenger. So, my question is this. Could the unnamed male passenger... O'Reilly ingest the alleged alcohol and then Ooh. grab the steering wheel because the unnamed passenger wanted a hot coffee at 4.05 a.m. And he was probably bringing a truckload of crawlers down to the church, yep. the church bazaar to, uh, to sell and raise money. I so, could, yeah. you know, we will point You're out right. the fact a hockey player was in trouble. It was Ryan O'Reilly. At least we know this. Terry O'Reilly never drove into a Tim Hortons, did he? No, and we, we don't have all the facts yet either. No. It's so purely no. speculation. So we're not rushing to judgment That's on correct. this Ryan O'Reilly nope. deal. And you know what? It's a lot easier. It can happen a lot easier, you know, hitting houses or hitting buildings late at night. It happens. <laughs> it happens. From what I hear. <laughs> Excuse me. It happened once down on the South Shore near you, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Uh, what I want to do right now, we're going to take a quick break and look at a video of uh, some season highlights as compiled by the good folks up in Canada at the CBC. We'll be right back after this. Stanley Cup has been an incredibly tough trophy to win. You never know when you're going to get this chance again. Winning would be incredible. It would be the ultimate dream come true.
Raw Hockey Championship. We don't stop here, Blue. We don't quit. Oh, scores. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah! We're going to the game! Yeah, Blue! The Stanley Cup playoffs. Just two teams remain. He scores! And the Lightning strike first. Two minutes was all it took for them to win a hockey game. This series is tied! 1-1! The Lightning have won game three! <laughs> Johnny, the next punch going in. I score! Jonathan Taves! Two games apiece! Bishop's up the floor. One winner's on here. Patrick Sharp scores! The Chicago Blackhawks a win away. Game six of the Stanley Cup final. Enjoy. Here's Steven Stamkos. Deets! So a little compilation from the masterful video production people at the CBC. Uh, you know, it was a great season overall, in my opinion. I'm, I'm talking everything in total. Of Providence yep. winning the, the NCAA. The Blackhawks, that's an organization that's built to win. Yeah. I mean, they get it right. Yeah. Uh, you know, they've got salary cap issues like so many other teams. Um, you know, one thing, I was watching the draft, and I heard, and it was a, from a commentator out of Canada, mentioned that Peter Shirelli left Don Sweeney with quite a cat mess. And I get a little nervous hearing that because they both went to Harvard. So I hope they both weren't under the same math professors at Harvard if, if one screwed well, up the cap and good. the other one's inheriting it. Well, one could be at the top of the class and one could be at the bottom, you know. Yeah. You know how that works. Yep, absolutely, you know? yeah. But, um, uh, you know, I w once again, I, it, it's July and I'm wishing them luck. Uh, they've got a ton of players and you can only dress 20. So uh, we'll see what happens there. Now, now, now uh, Campbell's Soupy's gone, right? Yep. Uh, and they still got uh, Kelly. Kelly's still there. big money. They can't yep. get rid of him nope. because who wants him for that kind of money? Unless they eat some of his contract, which yeah. is what well, they did with Well, it doesn't Lucic. help you with the cap, though. No, but it, it, it helps you with the roster. So, if you you know, let's say Noel yeah. Shari was ready. Right. He won't be making the money Kelly was. Right, exactly. Exactly. Uh, and, speaking, and, speaking of that, the cap, how about trading Savard for the $4 million that he's worth so that someone can add it to their cap so they can get over the bottom cap. So uh, let me, I'll, I'll give a brief synopsis. I didn't go to Harvard and do the math program there, but um, there's a cap and there's, there's a bottom cap and you have to pay above the bottom cap. Like you can't pay $200,000 for your team because you're going to have a junk and nobody want to go and it doesn't help the league. So these teams, two teams in particular, bought players who haven't played but are on contract. So they bring them to their team they put the $4 million on their cap, which puts them over the $20 million or $23 million, whatever it is right now, and they never use the player. Talk about circumventing the system. Well, it, it's, it's happened with uh, Toronto and Nathan Horton's contract. Yeah. It just happened with Arizona picking up Chris Pronger's contract, which I think is the biggest of the three we've mentioned. Right. And it's, it, like you said, it's circumventing the cap. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, something should be done about that. Well, we've got to get the you commissioner know? to get on that. Yeah, I suppose I'll well, give him a call. What would the hockey show be without showing some fights? Let's oh, show a few fights, nothing. and then we are going to come back on the other side of this pugilistic activity to wrap things up. Back after this. I like that talk.
Well, nothing wrong with two guys dropping the mitts and having a go, eh? Oh, it's nice to see that. You only see it uh, on special occasions in the NHL. Let me ask you this. Did you see any fights in the playoffs? No. No, but you know, Paul, you usually don't. Only in the first rounds, maybe. Uh, teams that don't feel like they're going to go somewhere next year or whatever. Uh, but in the finals, it's more important to get the puck and, and, and get it down the other end. And, and nobody has time for that stuff. You know what I mean? Nobody has time for it. But the point is, um, I don't know if they need tough guys in the league anymore. I really don't think so. And well, maybe spending not the fighters. money and everything yeah. else. You know? But uh, um, it's gone to European hockey. It's what it is. And we didn't see fights, but I mean, the player, and I hear this from basketball fans, the NHL playoffs are light years more exciting. Oh, and yeah, the NBA of playoffs. course, of course. Uh, and I hear that time of after course. time after time. I do it, want to pontificate on one thing. Uh, I was just doing some lacrosse video work, yeah. and I don't ever want to hear anybody mention hockey parent again because I saw some behavior from lacrosse parents really? that was not exactly exemplary. I saw one father who was asked to leave the, the I was going to say the rink, leave the field because he wouldn't shut up with the referees. And he was proud of the fact he'd been asked to leave, even though he was right. I saw another woman screaming at her husband because he had done something wrong. And then the amount of parents well, that- Well, that happens all the time. That, true, true, but not in public on a lacrosse oh, field. Oh, all right, all right, I didn't know And then the amount of parents that think they can officiate lacrosse games. I mean, folks, let your kids play, let the referees officiate. End of story. You want a, okay? you want a referee, take the course, take the test, Put the uniform on and get out there and do your best abilities. Then another thing, and I'll just get off this horse after this, this soapbox. A kid's coming in, and this was girls lacrosse. Kid comes in to take a shot, sails it right up and over the goal, and a kid said on the sidelines, oh, nice save. And then the mother said, oh, well, she didn't save it. It went up and over her. I said, well, you know, I didn't say that. But first of all, lady, the goalie was in position. That's why the shooter shot it high. She had nowhere to shoot. So give the goalie some credit. All right? Nothing wrong with that, eh? I got no comment on that. Okay. All right. Closing thoughts. All right. Um, I wish Providence the best. Um, Hockey East is great. Uh, the Bruins need some work. And uh, they got to put the puck in the net. That's it, brother. With me, congratulations to Nate Lehman. He has put Providence College on the hockey map forever. He has joined yeah. legends from that school, such as Lou Lamorello and Brian Burke. Together, he will walk forever with them. Ooh. As far as the Bruins, I think Claude Julien will be on a short leash. We will see yeah. what happens come uh, October. But uh, until then, folks, we're going to wrap this up. Our thanks to everyone at NCTV. Good. I'm Paul Altmaier. He's Horace Greeley. As always, good, good things, things happen, happen when you go, go to the, the net. net.